back and we'll verify that all the GPOs that we configured for the original scenario are ready to go. So the first thing we need to have is a hey, the Centrify agent. So you have several options for this. You can download the agent and copy it, copy it into the machine, which is what I've done. I actually have um, the agent uh, downloaded on uh, on my machine. But in a corporate environment, most likely you will um, you'll probably have a, um, a package manager, um, you know, like uh, Casper or Jaff. Those solutions provide. Uh, complementary capabilities to Centrify, since uh, Centrify specializes in Active Directory integration. But there's also overlapping capabilities in terms of configuration management. Uh, typically, we in, in big environments, you see them together. Uh, although these things may, may be changing in the future as well. Uh, the other options are to deploy the software uh, through any programmatically mechanisms or even use uh, Deployment Manager to push the software out. That's the tool that we Centrify provides for free. So uh, the first thing we need to know is that we can communicate with our domain controller. So it, you know you know the Contoso scenario, uh, DC1. So <clears throat> it seems I can ping DC1, no problem. So from my communications perspective, I'll be fine. I'm going to go ahead and run that DMG file. And of course, I need an administrative account on the Mac to be able to install software. Let's go ahead and uh, minimize this. And at this point, the agent is being um, uh, it's being exploded. So I have a couple of a couple of things I could run an AD check. So let's go ahead and run an AD check. Those of you who have done the Unix labs uh, know what AD check is. Um, AD check is a basically a quality assurance tool that allows for people to know if. Uh, uh, Non-Windows agent uh, is ready to join this, uh, the system or the Active Directory with Centrify. So I'm gonna my domain is corpcontoso.com. So this is just a graphical version of AD join. It goes out and it uh, you know checks uh, the OS if it's uh, supported. Checks DNS. Notice that it's saying hey you only have one DNS. Typically in a production environment you have more than one DNS. And uh, you know, the only warning was with uh, DNS, so everything looks fine. All I need to do is go ahead and run the installation, which is going to prompt me for credentials at some point. You know, fairly straightforward installation, just like any, uh, you know, Mac. Another uh, benefit is that uh, uh, this package can be deployed using Apple Remote Services as well. So um, wait until the installation um, uh, kicks in. So it's asking you, hey, you know, um, you know, it's asking where the package is going to be installed. Um, in this particular case, um, you know, we just need to agree and and uh, install. So it's going to ask me for credentials. This is a local account that I have in the machine uh, with administrative rights. And uh, one of the things that will happen is, uh, just like any Centrify installation, the software will be put in the system, but it will not be active until the system is joined into AD. This is great because that means that you can have the Centrify agent be part of your enterprise build uh, this is a very common scenario, uh, especially for servers. So installation should be uh, wrapping up soon. I'm going to go ahead and close this um, DMG file. And now it's uh, asking me to launch the AD join system. This is basically a, a wizard that allows you to join the machine. So uh, this is the welcome to the wizard. I'm just going to press continue. It's asking me the local account that is going to perform the changes in the system. Uh, OK, so type the right password. All right, so what's the domain you're going to join? It's corp. And the user that I'm going to use, I'm going to try my uh, Larry David. 
if I did the delegation correctly, which I think I made a mistake, but otherwise we can switch to, to Jerry Seinfeld. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, put in the password. All right, so we've authenticated fine. Um, that doesn't mean that we can join yet. So in here, because we are running on um, uh, free mode is express, doesn't process GPOs, just basic authentication. Uh, we're going to be running in auto mode because we're not going to use any zones for this. Uh, in my particular requirements, any person should be able to log into corporate Max. However, I'm considering uh, creating a video for zone mode for Max later. You, um, this is the name of the Mac. I, um, in in this particular case, I could just choose to join the machine with a different name, but I'm just going to keep things consistent consistent here. And in here, in the advanced options. I'm going to you know change the container because we basically decided that this is going to be under uh, the Mac corporate container, which is by the way the place that I've delegated access to my user. If I wanted to join with a particular domain controller, I can or change the computer alias. These are advanced features. This is just a test environment, so no problem. Again, I said that this may fail because I might have checked something wrong when I did the delegation. Uh, and I've corrected that um, on the video. But there you go, everything is fine. Um, uh, you know, my user uh, was able to join the machine to the domain and at this point I'm gonna do what most people do with Windows machines, just uh, do a quick restart. So we're gonna verify now, <clears throat> once the computer restarts, uh, that the GPOs that we set up are working correctly. So, um, you know, I'm gonna go by memory here uh, but we have uh, items that are related to security. We have items that are related to um, uh, configuration management and to user management. So the, the way I'll know right away if things are working uh, is uh, the first GPO that should tell that things are going well is the, the banner. So this computer was just a standalone machine. When I boot up with this machine, uh, if I get a network banner, uh, that means that, uh, um, you know, at least we're, we read those uh, GPOs from AD. Uh, another telltale right away will be when I log in for the first time. Uh, the position of the dock. So I've set up the dock to be on the left side of the screen, uh, which is against the defaults from Apple um, that makes the dock underneath. So uh, it should be really easy to determine if things are not working. So, and, and there you go. So in here you can see that the, the, the dock is um, actually the, um, the disclaimer that I put in is already there. Uh, maybe before uh, you saw that there was network accounts that are not available. What that means is that you know we were loading and trying to connect to Active Directory. So depending on how uh, optimizes your ID, this may or may not take uh, long. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, you know uh, try to log in. So in this case, I'm going to use Larry's account. And notice that Larry is uh, is uh, because he belongs to that Max administrator. He should be able to perform administrative duties in here. So, um, and first time logging in, of course. So our experience is going to be a little, oh, uh, you know, what all the desktop items and um, are being created. So. One thing that is important for people to realize is this. We're running in AutoZone mode. What that means is that um, uh, the Centrify agent needs to calculate who needs access, not only in the local domain, but across multiple domains. But now we can go ahead and verify things. So notice that A, that the dock is on the left side. That means that my, um, my GPOs are working. So let's just go on the basic stuff. So if I go into my system preferences and I want to change my password let's just say um, you know this is my account right here notice that it says admin meaning that I am an administrator 
Uh, this verifies that by pure membership on that Mac admins group, uh, I'm able to do changes in, in this machine, which means that I've eliminated the need to have a shared account. This is a great security win right away. The other one, let's just say I, ch I want to change my password and I put my old password in and I'm going to make ABC123 the password. This is too simple to short, so let's take a look. Notice the message here. It says, you know, I was unable to change it because it doesn't meet the, you know, uh, the, um, the requirements set by the system administrator. What that means is that the policy in AD is being respected. The other thing is, um, uh, from a user perspective, notice this network shares that was mounted here. So let's take a look. So in here, and let's, let's, uh, we would probably have to take a view. Uh, my, my mounted share should be popping up in here, but let's take a look. Let's just, uh, we'll verify that later. Uh, let's go into system preferences. I did some changes on the network. So uh, notice that it says corpcontoso.com, localcontoso.com, and all these things. These are the things that I changed centrally. So that means that I can basically manipulate the TCP IP properties of the machine using this. Um, one thing that I, that I do not like is the fact that it still has this old IP address. So um, I may need to check with VMware to see if my network is actually set up correctly. Um, and yeah, I need to set it up to host only. Uh, let's take a look. I might have disconnected myself here, so let's reconnect again.